a massive game, the FA Cup tie against opponents you're now familiar with from Tuesday night. Yes, they've had a chance to have a good look at us, uh, and likewise we've had a chance to look at them. Um, it was a tough game, it was one that finished uh, on a season, so uh, you know, we know what we've got to do. Was it a learning curve to some extent on Tuesday night, or did you feel there were no real surprises in the course of the game? I thought it was a tough game, I wasn't surprised there. I thought it would be a battle, the pitch didn't help, it was tough conditions for both teams, and I think, I'm hoping you know, the weather's a lot better now. But we'll get a flatter surface and a, and a better game of football because you know, the ball's in the air quite a bit. It's not our style, but you know we had to adapt, and I thought the players done great. Uh, on the evening to uh, come away with draw and we'll be as disappointed as we spoke about after the game to concede so late but you know uh, a draw is not always a bad result I think. You made a good start down at Dorchester, is it going to be important to do the same in the FA Cup time? Yeah the, the, the players are really bright, it's, it's important in any game to come out firing, you don't want to fall behind or the, the, the first one or two things you do in a game you want them to be uh, we want to do the Welsh, and I say, and uh, it'll be no different on Saturday. So uh, we'll be looking for a good start. We'll be looking to get on the front foot as quickly as possible, and I'm sure they'll be looking to contain us early in the game. Do you think they'll play more defensively because they did try and take the game to you when they got the opportunity in midweek? Uh, I don't really know actually. I, uh, I think um, we played 4-4-2 against us. So we we were set 4-4-2, and so it. It was evenly matched up, but I'm not sure whether they'll, they'll put an extra man in midfield or whether they'll go 4 4 2. I think the biggest thing for us is that our preparation is, is right and correct and we treat them with respect, which we will, and that we go about our business as usual. You know, the players have been in good form of late, and I, uh, I felt the other night on, on reflection of the game now that maybe we should have won it, but it, it wasn't to be. But this is a one off, and we left a bit our best to win the game. Gosling looked quite lively, certainly in the first half. I think you tended to double up on him as much as he could in the second half as he their key player? I think you, you have to double up when you know you, you can't really leave your, uh, your full back 1v1 all the time. We like to be expressive, we like to open the pitch up, but at the same time, you know, O'Donnell, as it was on Tuesday night, and Lawless know they've got a job to do, a defensive responsibility for the team. So uh, they have good wingers, they've got good players in the team, they've showed that by, by uh, going through in the last round against Plymouth. And, um, you know, they've got a lot of ex-league players, so the gap actually isn't that great as they showed against them. What's the difference in terms of the approach from FA Trophy to FA Cup? Is there anything significant as far as the respective management managers are concerned? I think there'll be a better atmosphere than what there was Tuesday night. I think there'll be a good atmosphere in Kenilworth Road on um, Saturday, and I think it's obvious that the third round is massive for any lower-level club. So. Um, it's all to play for. It's a huge game for both clubs. We've treated all the cups with respect, and uh, we want to go through. Yeah, you certainly kept your promise of fielding a strong team in midweek. And the third round, you said you've been lucky in the FA Cup before. Is that the sort of thing that can make a difference at this stage? Yeah, I mean, I, I said lucky in the sense that you know I've I've got through to the third round a few times in the fourth round, but it takes a lot of hard work and uh, preparation. You play against teams uh, below you, above you, and you have to prepare right. And I feel that we've always done that in games gone by, and uh, it'll be no different this time round. It's going to be a tough, tough game on Saturday, but it'll be a tough game for them as well if we uh, if we play to our usual standards. And having well, having ended with a replay from the first game, is that the last thing you need from this FA Cup tie? Yeah, <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, I think you know, three games within a week. I think we'll both be uh, had a lot of each other. Though. What about injury wise? John Shaw getting closer, but is he in contention for this one? He is, yeah, he's trained for uh, two or three days now. Uh, no game, you know, he's not had a reserve game or any practice match, so he has got through those three days. Uh, him and Mendy, I'm hopeful, will both be up for selection on um, Saturday, albeit if I do choose to put them in the squad, it probably is the same. And Smith, you mentioned last time with York having gone out, he might be available. Is that the case? Yes, yeah, Smith is available now, so that's a plus for us. I thought he played very well on Tuesday night. You know, these with the weathers uh, coming in like they are now, the heavier pitches, uh, it's a different game of football, and I think it suits someone like Jonathan Smith. So I'm delighted to have him for the game. And uh, you know, we, we lose Ainge, so uh, we'll have to make uh, one change for sure. Yeah, you're going to have to tweak the defence. Is that something you'd rather avoid if possible? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think one thing I've been looking for is some um, consistency.
consistency in, in the team selection and continuity. And I, I feel the last three games, I think if you look at our record over probably the last 15 games or so, we've been in really good form. So um, it's, it'd be disappointing that Simon misses it, but there's opportunity for uh, you know maybe Beckwith or if we decide to bring Ronnie over one or Rotoma, which we've done before. I was going to ask you what you were leaning towards, but yeah. I don't suppose you want to reveal it. Eh? No, I mean, like to, to uh, be as honest as I can in, 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 in these press interviews, but you know, I can't give it give the game away as to what we're going to do. That would be uh, foolish. And if Shaw is ready, do you think he'd be in a situation where he's in a, in a position to start the game or not? I think he'd like to start the game, but be, you know, with being out, I think now over three weeks, I think it would be. Um, and not having a reserve game, and I'd be reluctant to start him. So I think Gray's in great form. Um, you know, Rendell and him have formed a partnership. You've got Fleetwood that come off the bench and scored. So I'm not desperate to push John back, although we do know what he can do, whether he starts or comes from the bench. Uh, but he's a real golfer. James Dance continues his return to fitness. Is he in a position to start yet? Uh, he's pushing for a start. He's desperate. He's been desperate since he's put his boots back on to uh, to play. So he's looking um, very good in training. Although uh, I'm quite happy with the way we played the other night. I thought it was it was a tough game, which we we had to commit to from the first minute. We done that. So again, James will have to be patient. But he's certainly he's good to have him back. And just finally on injuries, uh, Danny Spiller and Gary Richards. Any more progress? Yeah, Spinner's uh, getting closer, and I've said that now for a few weeks, but um, again, it's been at such a long time, we don't want to rush that, but yeah, I'm really hopeful we'll see him soon, and I think we'll see, uh, we're hopeful of seeing Richard soon in January. And how important is this tie to the club? I mean, I, the club have not spoken to me about it, about it directly, you know, as, as a rule. Um, but it's, it's important, it's very important to me in the players. It's, it's, it's the next game. It's the FA Cup, we, we don't want to go out, we want to get into the third round, we want to have a cup run. So um, it's massive to me and the players. And although it's not the highest profile tie of the weekend, it's certainly, as you've mentioned already, a lot at stake in terms of the potential to draw the Premier League club in the next round. Yeah, I think um, I think Luton is high profile. I think we we get a good following every week, home and away. I think we sh I'm sure that Dorchester will be thrilled to come to uh, Kenworth Road and and put on a good show, and so uh, there'll be a good crowd there. So it, there's always uh, there's always pressure on us to go and perform, and it's always a big game whenever Luton take the field. I always feel it's a big game. Um, it makes it bigger because, as you say, it's the winners going to the third round. We desperately want that to be us. It's brilliant being in the third round. It's great for the club. Um, you know, they'll all they'll have the same aspirations as us. They'll be desperate to go through as well. So I'm hoping that that will, will make it for a very good game. And that, at, that atmosphere change from Tuesday that you mentioned, how important is it that the crowd stay with you, whatever the circumstances of the match? I think it's important that we that we come out of the traps. I think it's important that we show our supporters, our home fans, what our away supporters have seen this season, which is us getting on the front foot quickly, putting teams under pressure and getting in front. That's, that's what we're paid to do and that's what we're about to try and do on Saturday. Spiller, uh, hopefully back soon. What, what, how far along though is he in his recovery? Is he back in full training yet, or where, whereabouts is he? Uh, no, he's 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 had something which is I think it's called like a shock therapy to the Achilles, um, which then needs a few days to, to recover. Again, I, I don't get too involved with it. The, you know, I trust Simon, our physio. When the players are back fit, um, they'll appear on the training field. I'm not, I don't push it. Um, it's it's his domain, and uh, I I always concentrate on what I have in front of me, and so we have no spiller at the moment, and I'll wait until uh, until he's back. And just finally from me as well, uh, you and touched on it, but it being the second round with the third round where all the big boys come in, I guess does that take even less motivation to get to the players beforehand because they must you know know that it's getting to the really important part where you know anything can happen in the cup. Yeah, I think. Um, you know, I've been here before where, you know, the hype of it or if you, if you lose focus and start looking at the third round that the big clubs come in, you take your off the ball, I'm not going to do that. I think the key is, yes, I'm sure Dorchester want to win and I'm, I'm damn sure we want to win. It's how to win. So I concentrate on how we're going to win the game, what we need to do to win the game, and that's my focus. So 
Um, if we do it right, if we start right, we work really hard. That's the first thing before any tactics are put up. If we work our socks off, um, we've got every chance of going through. Paul, I noticed on your board last week it said Ainge concentration. Um, how much does it test your patience as a manager when they clearly don't concentrate from the set piece in it's 2 2 on Tuesday night? Uh, it, it's frustrating, but it's my job to improve players. Um, I always say 75% of the player, 25% of the coach, because the coaches and myself, we, we have 20 plus players to deal with. I think that players need to take responsibility, there's no doubt about that. But Simon is new, Simon's come to the club. It is a step up for him, it's a step up from the club he was at in terms of stature, the size of club and pressure that comes with it. And he's playing against better players now, so maybe stuff he was getting away with um, beforehand, I don't know, didn't see enough of him, um, he can't get away with now. So we've got a real gem in, in Simon Ainge, he's, he's a really good centre half, um, but you know, the last couple of games, sort of. Mansfield and again the other night he switched off, lost concentration and and like I said earlier, it's not as if we you know, he's probably open there that the, the lad led it over or wide and he gets a second bite but he's ended up in the back of the net and um, there's no one more disappointed than him. Um could hear the frustration in your voice on Tuesday about the fixtures piling up. I think yeah. by Wednesday you could be as many as three games behind some most of the teams in your league. Is that a concern, Paul? Yeah, it is a concern. It's something that's not new. To, you know, it's not new to me. It happened to me in my first year of management, where we got to the final of the trophy and and uh, also had a really good FA Cup run. And you fall behind, and I, I think that's unfair. I said that on Tuesday. I don't think that's right. I think that needs to be looked at because in any other league um, in England, the, the the league table doesn't change. You know, the fixtures can't change. You know, so. We could be a victim of our own success, but I won't swap it. You know, we go to win every game. If we can get through, we'll have to. We'll be on catch up. What would be your solution to the problem? Um, I think maybe uh, you know, if you're looking at the trophy, you know, just maybe finish it on the night. You know, I think if, if it's going to interfere with a league program, which is important to every club, it's huge to Luton. You know, we've been trying now to get out of this division in the fourth season and we don't want anything to get in the way, you know, there's enough work to do without falling behind with games because you'd much rather have the points in the bag than be on catch up. Which is fine for me, um, traffic was horrendous on Tuesday night, I'm just interested how you keep yourself busy and occupied on the bus, do you get your iPad out or your iPhone out or do you listen to music, play cards? <laughs> no, sometimes I, I travel separately from the players, so um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm quite relaxed once the training's done whether we're playing at home or we're travelling away, once the training's done and I feel like we're prepared, I, I switch off from it, I relax. So um, I really trust the group of players we've got at Luton. I think they're a good bunch. I think they understand the challenges that, that lie ahead. And it's a huge challenge um, to try and be promoted. It's hard at the best of times. To try and get out of this league is very, very difficult. So I've got a good group and I trust them. Um, I just got one more. Going back to the set piece um, in the last minute in the 2 2 draw early in the week, in this week, you said 25% players, 75% of your job. How do you go about rectifying sort of personal mistakes from players? Do you have to sort out the mental side and the physical side in training? Well, I think like, the, the, the way I manage, you treat every every player differently. You know, this. if you look at it, if you look at, say, Andre Gray on Tuesday, he missed a lot of chances. The last thing I think Andre needs is me having a go at him or, or telling him, stating the obvious. I think you go to the training ground and you back the person that you've signed and you, you practice. Practice makes permanent. It's the same on set plays. We, we have a set up. Um, and where Ainge is concerned, he is new. He's a new player. A lot of the group have been with me now for, you know, 20 plus games. So, you know, Simon will need extra work, um, you know, to be touch tight in the box because you can't allow anyone to get a run on you in the 18-yard box. The um, the person attacking the ball is the fate, his, his favourite because he's attacking it. So it's important that you get your body in, and um, the, the best place to improve people is on the training field.